Hey YouTube, how's it going? I'm back for video number two on my channel. Today I want to talk about my Bristol and King's Medical School interviews. Like I said in my previous video, I got interviews from Bristol, King's and Southampton, but I only ended up going to Bristol and King's. I just want to talk about my experiences when I went there, sort of how I was feeling, and any tips for before, during and after the interview. So let's start with Bristol because that was the first one that I got. I was in Toronto at the time, so I had to fly to Bristol. I wanted to come here a couple of days early. I went to Bristol the night before. This was my first medical school interview in over four years. I really, really wanted to get in. Nerves are running all over the place and that's only natural. One of the biggest tips I can give you guys is just practice, practice, practice. The more you practice talking in front of someone, the more you practice talking to someone, the easier it becomes. So the morning of the interview, I woke up super early, I think like two and a half hours in advance. Actual interview time. I get to sort of the big hole and during that time, really it was a game of keeping myself calm, trying to keep my nerves down, trying to just focus on the positives. I'm gonna do my best, whatever happens, happens. I've prepared as much as I possibly can. I found this was a good opportunity to start making some small talk with the with the other participants, just to sort of take the edge off. Then began the interview. So whenever you were giving your answers, if you wanted to, you could hear the other students' answers. When you're actually giving the interview, it's really hard to focus on what other people are doing. Wouldn't recommend trying to listen to other people. The very first question that I had was a written communication station. I was given a picture and I was asked to describe what I saw and make some inferences on what was present but it was all handwritten. Importantly for a station like this, it doesn't really matter what your handwriting is like. Your handwriting is kind of like a check mark. Is their handwriting legible or is it not? Focus on actually depicting in a clear manner what you can see in front of you. You're giving your notes to someone who hasn't seen this picture at all. If there's like a wound, let's say, it's not enough to say that there's a circle. You have to describe the size of the circle. Is it smooth? Does it have jagged edges? What's in the middle of the circle? What's towards the outside? Is there anything surrounding it? What are the different colors that you see? You really have to paint a full picture for the person reading your notes. Instead of writing out like a paragraph of what I was seeing, I checked it into bullet points. It was probably about six minutes uh, per MMI station. So there was quite a lot of time there. And they tell you that once you're finished with the station, if you and your interviewer don't have anything else to talk about, you don't have to. You can just stop right there or you can talk about anything random that you want. Another interview station asked me about my work experience. That was a really easy one for me because I had obviously prepared very well and I knew exactly what I wanted to say and what I wanted to talk about. I really quickly gave a summary of what I did, the important actions that I took and what I learned in those experiences. It's always really important to talk about what you've learned. It's not as important to say I volunteered at an elderly home as it is to say that you understood how to talk to people who were of a different age than you. Maybe you learned to explain complex topics in simple ways, put yourself in an uncomfortable position position and try to you know move past some previous biases that you had you're capable of dealing with uh, people of di different diversities ethnicities and backgrounds than you all of these things are what you're trying to get across in your stories about your work experience these are the important things that the interviewers are looking for when you say something like i'm really dedicated i'm a hard worker you need to back that up you need to have evidence so what did you do to show that you were dedicated maybe you had a part-time job while you were studying in high school Maybe you undertook an extra A level. You need to show examples and prove that the interviewers, they're not there to catch you out. They don't want to find faults in your responses or in your answers. They want you to succeed. They want you to tell them everything you possibly can about yourself. Always try and share and give as much information as you can. Because it's MMI, know that any one station that you perform badly on doesn't affect any of the other stations. Each interviewer only knows you for that single station that they're doing. They don't know if you completely screwed up the last station or if you completely aced it. So now let's talk about K Kings. And Kings is the school that I ended up choosing to go to in the end. That's why I'm studying now. I'm a graduate student on the undergraduate course. I'm currently 22, by the way. Kings, Kings, Kings College, London. So the Kings interview room was quite small, I'd say. Kings, I remember a lot more about because I wrote down all of the questions. For Kings, there were seven MMI stations for seven minutes each. The whole experience lasted about an hour. It really wasn't that long. The very first station that I sat in was with an older man and he showed me a graph. Immediately, I knew that this was a graph interpretation question. The graph is super, super simple, okay? They're not trying to trick you. If they ask you to describe the graph, then you describe the graph. If they ask you to interpret the graph, then you interpret it. Don't do both at the same time or mix one up with the other. Be very specific as to what you give. My second station was an ethical scenario. They'll commonly be about trying to console your friend in an uncomfortable situation for them, or perhaps do the right thing when you see that a friend or a coworker is doing something that they shouldn't do. The third station that I had, I was handed an image that was 
very, very chaotic. Let's say it was like a very crowded beach. The interviewer asked me to just describe this picture as if I wasn't sitting in the room. The important things in a station like this is to be really clear and concise in your communication. They're not looking for you to just blabber out every single thing that you see in the picture. For example, if you start counting all the people on the beach, that's probably not a good idea. However, giving an estimate of how many people you think on, is on the beach is probably a good idea. Also things like time of day, general colors, the general layout. So is it a like closed cove? Is it a long beach? Is the sand yellow? Is the sand red? Are there big rocks? Are there lots of umbrellas? Do you see any shops? Blah, blah, blah. Just describing as much as you can about the image, but clearly and concisely. You want to mention the most important, biggest things first and sort of move your way down into, into specifics. Some of the other questions that I was asked were the classic ones that you would expect, right? So why do you want to be a doctor? Because a lot of students are going to give rehearsed answers of the most common explanations. The important thing is how you back it up with your own experiences, how you back it up with your own stories to show and to prove that this is actually what you want to do. If I say, okay, I want to be a doctor because I want to help people. That's probably one of the most common, most rehearsed and given answers for this scenario in an MMI interview. But what does helping people really mean? I can say that when I was in Toronto, I volunteered at the Canadian center for victims of torture and through that I helped refugees integrate into Canadian society I helped facilitate English lessons I helped monitor mental physical and social skills over time to see if the students were integrating there's an example of me helping people but it's backed up by evidence it's backed up by something that I actually did and that's so much better for the interviewer because they can say okay this person really does want to help people so I want to talk about some general interview tips before you actually go to your MMI Believe it or not, you do need to do a lot of practice. Here's what I did. I scoured the internet for hundreds of questions. Under each question, I would type out my response, what I thought was a good answer, importantly addressing and including my own experiences, my own stories, and how I learned and moved on from those. Once I had my paragraph or my response to a question, that's when I would begin practice talking. Having typed out a response is so, so, so different than actually saying it out loud. I tried recording myself and listening back to the recording, trying to see common fidgeting movements that I would do, or if I mentioned too many ums or ands in my sentences, stuff like that. By far the most important thing, the biggest thing I can recommend for you to do is to actually meet up with other people doing interviews and talk to each other. It was the perfect way to practice speaking in front of other people, to practice talking in front of strangers, get all of the anxieties out the way, all the stresses. Yeah, those were my experiences in both Bristol and Kings. Honestly, both at the time, extremely, extremely nerve wracking. But looking back on it, um, it was a lot of fun. In the end, I chose Kings. That's why I am now and I'm having lots of fun on the course. Subscribe to my channel if you feel like it. Hit that like button if you enjoyed the video. I'll see you guys in the next one.